presentation, I can sing some of the songs I've written and because I was influenced so much by the uh, traditional sound from the 50s. But it, it's good that, that, you know, your thing isn't really that highly attuned to the mainstream and that you've got your niche carved out for you because this next segment that we're going to get into here on the show would completely destroy any chance you would ever have at a mainstream music career. And I just want to check with you. Are you game for, for uh, heading into this dangerous territory I'm about to take us to? Well, I guess I'm ready. I mean, you're a shootist, right? Yeah. You're, so you're, you're well protected. You can, uh, you can keep us safe while we uh, travel into this, uh, into this back country here. Otherwise known as the news. News. Okay, Ben. Are you familiar with the Undercountry Music News? Yeah, I'm. A, I'm a little familiar with it. Yeah. Oh, so you've you've heard the show before? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then, then you won't be shocked. And and for those of you uh, just joining us here. For those of you on our talk show format, because uh, we put it into a few places like on Spreaker and also up on YouTube where we can't play the music from under country music. Uh, so we sort of um, chop out the news portion and we put it up on Spreaker and also on YouTube that, in hopes that it'll attract people and lead them back to the larger show. Uh, because otherwise we get like copyright notices and things like that, whether we have permission to play the music or not. But anyway, those of you just joining us in talk show land, I'm hanging out here with Ben Stillwater, country and western artist from Wisconsin, who also has his own TV show uh, called uh, Giddy Up. Yeah, so say hello to everybody out there in talk show land. Hello, everybody. This is Ben Stillwater. And uh, what was this about being a shooter now? We got to protect something. Yeah, well, well, luckily, uh, Ben packs heat, which is a really good thing because we're about to head into the dangerous territory, otherwise known as the undercountry music news. And that every single week, right here on this show, I go onto the front, onto Google, I type in the search term country music news, and whatever comes up on the front page of Google, whatever websites there are, I get on my pony and I just gallop right into those websites and I look to see if they actually have any country music news. Now, Ben, do you know what I often find, Ben, when I when I gallop into the back country of uh, the news portions of these websites? Well, it's kind of hard to say, I guess, nowadays, but you could run across probably just about anything. Yeah, I, I usually run across almost everything except country music news. Oh, no, that couldn't be good. So... So the purpose, the purpose of this, because it's so tough to actually get anything besides BS press releases from artists and their management companies and actually get some actual country music news, since it's so scarce that these people will actually report things that are really going on because, uh, you know, they just get the press releases and they stick them in their news roll and call, them, call it news and basically don't do their job. So what I do is I scour all these websites and I find the one or two stories that actually are news and I compile them all into this segment right here. And I report uh-huh. on those who report the country music news. What, what do we got for the news today? Well, I, I was, uh, well, we still got the danger part to get to, though. The danger part. Yeah, where well, you got to be looking over your shoulder. You got to have that shotgun cocked because when I get onto a website that's not doing their job and is not reporting any country music news and they've got all People Magazine type type fluff, you know, like uh, Taylor Swift's new line of elastic waistbands or, you know, is it okay? It you know does Brantley Gilbert really shave his toes? You know, like stuff like that. I pick one horrible, pathetic website every single week that's not doing their job to be the unlucky recipient of the Undercountry Music News Wet Belch of the Week. And that can make some enemies. I suppose it could. Yeah, that sounds like it's getting pretty 
pretty undercover there, all right. You, you ever uh, make chili over that fake campfire on that stage years? No, mostly coffee. Mostly coffee. Okay, well, that's a, l- a good lubricant there. For, for those of you in talk show land, uh, Ben makes fake fire on stage during his shows. Cowboy campfire. Cowboy campfire, and he makes cowboy coffee over the, the fake campfire, and and they play a lot of Western music, you know, and it's, uh, it's some cool stuff. And we'll, we're going to get you hooked up with uh, with Ben here at the end of this news segment. But anyway, you ready to get into it here, Ben? We're ready. Okay, over at CMT.com. Uh, some sad news. Um, Trace Adkins' wife has filed for divorce, and that's a drag. They didn't really dig into it a whole lot other than just to say the the mere facts that she has filed for divorce and, and that one did sort of end up on almost everybody's news roll this week and as you know uh, as most people know trace has uh, gone back into rehab uh, recently uh, for alcoholism after uh, blowing up on a cruise ship you, yeah. you heard about some of that stuff yeah I've heard about some of that yeah come off as a during during some of the apprentice filming i think doing some of that in and out yeah that that's a that's a drag i mean apparently there was a trace adkins impersonator on this cruise ship singing karaoke and uh and he'd been drinkering and uh and he kind of lost his cool with the uh with the adkins impersonator and you know i mean trace is a big dude big old dude I mean, that guy used to work on yeah. oil rigs. Can you imagine? You're up there, um, you know, singing "Swing, Bada Bada Swing," and Nick or uh, we ain't just fishing. And then all of a sudden, up walks this freaking mountain of a man, drunk off his a hole. Boy, I don't like the way you're singing my song. I mean, I mean, you'd probably get a little nervous there. Yeah, believe it or not, he's only an inch shorter than I am. You're act. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You're taller than Trace Adkins. About yeah, about an inch and a half, actually. How tall are you, Bill? I, I'm Ben. Why am I saying Bill? I've been calling you. I don't know why. I've been calling you Bill since we started talking today. I called you Bill well, on the phone earlier it, today. I don't know what the heck's going on with me. It, it must be you're thinking of Bill Cody or something. One of those Wild West guys. I I must be so. Anyway, how how tall are you, Ben? Well, I'm I'm actually uh, six foot seven and a half. If you want to really cut it down there. Wow, and and I'm assuming you wear boots sometimes. Oh, I wear boots the most all the time, unless I'm bedded down somewhere. But yeah, boots and a hat, you know. And and I I suppose I'm over well over seven foot with boots and a hat on. Holy cannoli! And do you wear one of them big old hoss hats? You know, like the Bonanza hoss. Well, pretty close. I, I like a, a a real nice cowboy hat in case it rains. You got some little protection the rain don't run down the back of your neck, you know. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk about my Bonanza addiction uh, more more towards the end of this show, and I'm going to see if you can't you know, guide me through some therapy on that. But anyway, Trace Adkins' wife has filed for divorce and that sucks and you know our uh, our prayers are with the adkins at this time uh, that's that's a rough one all right on yeah. to, on to countryweekly.com you know what they got at countryweekly.com this week probably the latest thing in country music <laughs> They got absolutely nothing except the undercountry music wet belch of the week. <laughs> oh, no. You never know when that's going to creep up on you, you know. I'm, ben made me some cowboy chili over that fake campfire, and I, uh, I uh, you know, packed it in, and so I've got some interesting stuff happening in my gullet right now. So and that's uh, Country Weekly. That, that is Country Weekly. Of course, this is from my research that I did last night on them. Of course, if you go there as you're listening to this, you'll, odds are you're going to find some great story, and you're going to go, well, why did he give him the belch? There's this awesome story here. He could have brought that. And it's because when you're listening to the show is not necessarily when I recorded the show. So, uh, you know, there's like a, a couple days uh, 
difference between uh, when the actually um, this week there's a one day difference between I'm, when I'm recording it and when the show comes out. So the show comes out every Saturday at midnight, and right now uh, we're recording on a Friday afternoon. So a little peek behind the curtain there. All right. Well, yeah. now, now that you've experienced the wet belch, you've lived through the horror, and you survived. Uh, I, it's most appropriate that at this time we proceed to tasteofcountry.com. Hello? Yep, still there. You're here, yes. You're, you're, uh, I, I've kind of left you speechless, I guess. Yeah, well, I was just kind of waiting to see uh, if you had another line to come after that. It seemed like he was going to follow it up. But, oh, uh, so this is the, the taste of country. Now, what's the difference of the taste of country compared to the latest country news? Well, tasteofcountry.com in their news section. Uh, this week, you can watch Brantley Gilbert jump into the extremely cold waters of the Cumberland River on a dare. And he does it, too. He even does a, he does a backflip into the Cumberland River. Shout some expletives as he jumps out because it's just freezing, freezing cold. And uh, well, I mean, you're you're hanging out from Wisconsin. I'm sure it's like a you know a summer swim to you, but but uh, down here our our blood thins out because uh, you know the, it's still kind of icy. We had a particularly cold winter for us here in uh, Tennessee this year. And uh, yeah, hey, at least he actually did something besides put out lame press releases like most everybody else in country this week so i, I do got to give him props for that he uh he went above and beyond the call of duty to entertain the folks and uh did a backflip into the cumberland river just for nothing more than to entertain us well sounds like he's right on the ball anyway with that you know if he'd done that up north he'd probably have to chop a big hole in that ice it's about three feet thick this year yeah, it was a, a pretty tough winter this year, and well, thank God for global warming. Otherwise, it would have been like twenty feet thick. Yeah, I reckon that's right. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, so everybody, uh, fire up those aerosol cans, get outside, and let's get summer here. Speed it up, huh? That's what I'm saying. <sighs> so what? What, this is the taste of country. So what else is the taste of country music at this time? What else do they have? No, that's pretty much it. Everything else over there sucks this week. Uh, they, they need to get they need to get some shows booked around that area there with them still water. We'll get some whole lot of news going on there for them. I'm saying, yeah, we need to we need to fire up them guns of yours, you know, and uh. You know, get you on there with that uh, with that uh, beautiful duettist that you like to hang out with. What's her name? What's her name over there? It's Cindy Jean. Cindy Jean, what's she doing these days? Well, we're we're down here in Kentucky, and we're going to, like I said, and we're we're working on uh, we're, we're doing uh, TV show filming. You know, different segments and stuff, but we're always doing that. So she's over there. Uh, Getting ready for the TV program. Ah, I was I was wondering if, wondering if she was going to make it on the show with us today here, and so she's uh she's over uh, get, doing all the dirty work while while you're hanging out here, uh, you know, spending worthless, mindless time with the country music news with me. Yeah, well, we could uh, we could probably arrange it to get her on the show here. We got a few more minutes. Maybe we get to another section. We can get her on the phone. Ah, maybe yeah, maybe in the next next segment we'll get her on here for the one two song punch. So, but that that comes there after the go. news though. But anyway, we're gonna uh, travel on to the boot now. Uh, theboot.com. Now, uh, theboot.com gets special props from me this week for featuring two relatively unknown country artists in their news role. Like uh, Robert Miranda releasing his debut album, and also Joshua Scott's new album getting highlighted over there. Are you familiar with either of those artists? Yeah, uh, I guess I'm not. I might have heard of them, but but I'm not familiar with them. I'm not familiar with them at all, and at the fact that they are such a prominent uh, website for country music 
you know, uh, you know, bringing up some up and comers like that. I just thought that was kind of cool because I have no idea who either of these two are, but I'm just glad to see someone putting someone in their news role besides the same old faces. So I wanted to give them some good props on that. See, I'm not all about belching and telling, saying that people suck. I, you know, I, I give credit when it's due. Yeah, well, that's, that's what radio guys do, right? I try. You know, I, I tried to find... Last week, my whole show, I counted down uh, the top 20 in country, uh, trying to find something good to say about someone, and it was really tough. I did find a couple good things to say about some people in the top 20. There were a couple a couple that struck me, but just about everything in the top 20 of country was either an Ooh, I Love You baby song or Let's Drop a Tailgate and Drink Beer. Or I'm so heartbroken yep. you left me. Those are the only three. Those are the only th- three things being written about in country music I- anymore these days. And, and that's kind of another big reason why I was so attracted to your song, Ben. Um, your song "Log Truck," and that's another big reason why that grabbed me because it wasn't an "Ooh I Love You Baby" song or an I, "I'm so heartbroken you left" or "Drop a Tailgate and you know shake your money maker while I crack open a beer." So. Well, there's there's all kinds of songwriters, uh, you know, and, and I guess most of the, the country music business today, I, I guess there's not a lot of people that are that are writing what you would call traditional. Even though I get asked all the time if I'm a traditional artist, and I like to say that I'm I'm a very new country artist because everything that I've written is new. It's, it's less than five years old. Everything and. So it is new, but it is uh, influenced by traditional music. But uh, a lot of the, the the modern country definitely has has leaned towards the the pop scene, and that you know, like you say, there's there's not a lot of things that's going to be going on because everybody sounds the same. So there's really no personalities left anymore. It's just more of a commercial business, and um, that that's a good thing for for that side of it. But I do feel that they should. Uh, express more of the originality uh, independently to personalities that want to be different and like well and Jennings and Willie Nelson that that were doing the, the new things but that they still made a statement and their own statement probably the most important thing yeah I mean you know I mean Will and Jennings hasn't put out a new album in how many years now though uh, well it's been a long time but he he probably won't lend us too many more albums uh, anymore but he's a uh, uh, but yeah you, there's no doubt there's a big generation gap well i know he's you know, dead that, but but you know every country artist i mean they always put out like three or four more albums after they die though yeah they, yeah they usually take the un, a lot of uncut stuff or you know previously unreleased yeah and, and uh, but it's you know the market has definitely gone to the to the, the teenagers uh, for the most part and and you know, it used to be you couldn't get really get a major recording contract in the fifties and sixties unless you were at least thirty years old. And now, if you're thirty years old, you're too old to, to get signed. Yeah, well, I mean, the times changing now. You know, I don't hold it against anyone that they, you know, they've all got families to feed. They've got an industry to support. There's crews that have that go on the road, and you know, I mean, it's it's putting food on a whole lot of people's tables. And that is the one thing that I can say about it. But, you know, when it becomes just about money and zero about music, I, I think we got a problem. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's a box, you know, really, with a lot of the, the major music markets, it's a box. And if you don't do what's recommended in that box, it, it's hard to be successful at any amount of level. Um, but you know, it, it's one of them things that basically, if you're if you're a trend changer or you know sticking to something that's different, it takes longer to catch on. Like you know, even George Jones, one of the greatest country singers of all time, nicknamed him the Voice. Um, and then they made know, a TV so, show about him. Yeah, well, they they, they picked a good uh, name for that for sure. Yeah, and that's that's the thing about it it's a personality uh, you know like George Jones uh, George Jones definitely had a lot of personality and uh, it, it, that's just what 
what you've got to be. So sometimes it isn't easy to, you might say, go against the grain uh, in, in the music business, or, uh, but, but that is what keeps originality genuine, is the fact that you know what you want to hear uh, and you stick to it. Well, the good thing about the Internet and what we have today is that people can actually find what they want to hear if they so choose. They can either sit there and just flip to the radio station or they can exercise some of their other options and actually find stuff. And, you know, that's a personal choice we all make. Now, anyway, let's move along here. NashvilleGab.com. The Swan Brothers respond to allegations that the TV show... The Voice, as we were just talking about, is rigged. Uh, rigged, huh? Who would have thought that? Well, they they didn't say it was rigged. They they just responded to allegations that the TV show is rigged, and uh, they piped in on it. And if you want to hear uh, their two cents on that, because the the Swan Brothers were finalists on The Voice, which is how they got known, you can get on over there to Nashville Gab and you can hear what they have to say about that. Now, I think what it is, is uh, in the contracts, the producers of the show can uh, can sort of put their hands in it and alter outcomes. So it's not all just the celebrity judges and, and the voting public, things like that. Yeah. Well... Yeah, it's hard to make a call on that for sure. You know, I think Blake Shelton was involved in some of the some of the planning or, or things like that. I don't I don't know a lot about it, but it 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 is kind of interesting. I think that those shows are are a really good thing because you know it used to be my the thing that strikes me funny about these I guess you call them maybe reality type of shows or uh, those types of singing shows is. They used to have in Nashville, you know, you could go down and you could, you know, you could try out a demo thing or, or, you know, do your thing in front of these labels and they'd sit and listen to these people by the hundreds audition. You know, it used to be that way. The industry was all about, that's what the Grand Ole Opry started for was to, to rise up local and young entertainers to the business. It was an open door for them to come in and, and check out to, uh, to meet the requirements of a family-run show uh, on the Grand Ole Opry. So they were auditioning people steady, but that went away when major record companies took over and got their stronghold, really. And So that's one of the things I do like about those shows is the fact that it does give people an auditioning regardless of your age because they turn their chairs around and the way you look they're going by the voice and so I think that part of it is, is unique and, and interesting but I suppose it's like a lot of things that get what you might say a little political with, with how it's really influential to who really gets picked I guess maybe there's a little bit of a little this or that in, in, the, in the judging and stuff like that yeah, maybe they pre free. but if the public likes you and other companies like you and they think they can do something with you even if you don't win it's still great exposure and can uh and can bump you up because i mean the swan brothers uh it, i don't really watch the voice so my understanding is that they did not win and but yet here they are with a, a hit song because they were on that show anyway we're going to move over uh to countrystandardtime.com right now and they are talking about the new johnny cash album out among the stars that's finally been released out time, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, all these guys, as soon as they get to heaven, the first thing they do is they hit the recording studio. You know? Just <laughs> you know, roll it, huh? Take one? I know. I mean, what well, wouldn't you? I mean, imagine the, the pool of musicians you have to choose from there. You know, so. Anyway... These recordings on Out Among the Stars, which is the new Johnny Cash album, uh, they were actually discovered by Johnny's son just a couple of years ago as he made his way through his father's archives after uh, Johnny Cash's death. And it, it, was a, uh, it was a collection of songs that was recorded in 1981 uh, when Johnny was actually having sort of a low point of his career. And after hearing it, the label just decided to take a pass and and shelve the project. So it was never released, and just the recordings 
which also include a duet with June Carter Cash. I think there's two duets with June Carter Cash and one duet with Waylon Jennings is on the album. And they've just been sitting over at the Cash Estate all these years. They so put her together and put her out, huh? Yeah, and well, his son, who's also a producer, also helped, you know, you know, go over the recordings and you know bring him up to today's standards and get him out there. And I, I had a listen. I went on YouTube and I had a, a listen to a couple of tracks from it, and uh, one of them was about a guy who kind of busts into a store and waves a gun around, and but allows the store owner to go. And then he just kind of stands there and waits for the cops to show up. I, I didn't listen to the whole song, though, because it was, you, you know, it was, while the subject matter was great, I mean, it was a, a really unique storyline. And I'll probably go back and listen to it and finish that one up. But the music itself was, you know, pretty typical and, you know, redundant and and it, there was just no edge to it. You know, that old Johnny Cash edge to it, I, I didn't find it there. Although I loved the subject matter of the song. It was pretty unique. And then there was another uh, another tune in there that I had to listen to. It, it just, uh, it, it wasn't terrible. I mean, I didn't even dislike it, but I did also didn't love it. It was just kind of uh, more polished up than than I like my Johnny Cash to be. In my opinion, Johnny Cash, you talk about the edge. Johnny Cash was one of the best rockabilly artists uh, that I've ever heard. Oh, a- absolutely, and, absolutely. It just, you know, when you hear those old recordings of Johnny Cash and they've, they've just got this raw edge about them that just, you know, that just claw their ways right out of the speakers. And, and then, you know, and, you know, later there was this lull kind of in the 80s where it was just what he was doing just wasn't wasn't quite that edgy anymore you know as it well one of the one of the reasons that you can probably lock a little bit of their edge there is because the the recording technology had changed so much to a digital age that just the recordings themselves were so clean back then on the sun records cuts i mean it was considered dirty or filthy recordings because it was taped and there was a lot just a couple mics in one room getting getting this guitar and bass and and vocal kind of all in one pass type of deal and they didn't have multi-track and it was just a, a gritty rock and roll sound and as they got cleaned up in, in uh, multi-track and digital recording it the tracks got so clean that it, it did take away from just that process alone uh, is bound to take away originality to uh, especially an artist that has a lot of grit like Johnny Cash exactly and that was I remember Neil Young was uh, really railing against the digital age when all that was happening as well and you know there you know there were a lot of great things the digital age brought us and you know some other things that make it kind of tough for the raw and more gritty artists but anyway I've only heard two songs off that album so I'm I'm far from a far from making a judgment call on it just yet but hey let's move on here Uh, let's go over to the 615.com now these guys have a story they have a real country music news story that nobody else had this week and it it just it's just beyond me how nobody else jumped on this story and uh you you ready for this one i'm ready Mickey Gilly just performed his very first show on the road in five years after recuperating from a 2009 fall that left him paralyzed from the neck down for three months and has had him in physical therapy for the past five years. And he has struggled and fought himself back and has just played his very first show back on the road. He still can't play piano, but he's out there performing once again. And the 615 are the only ones who uh, who were cool enough to report on that one. Yeah, Mickey Gilly, yeah. He's a he's a he's a, like the top honky tonk singer of, of, of country music for sure. Yeah, I mean he, he got uh, he fell five years ago helping a friend move a couch. He stepped in a flower bed. He was he was the guy walking backwards with the couch, uh, you know, stepped in a flower bed, and uh, the next thing he knows, he wakes up two days later in a hospital 
and he's paralyzed from the neck down. Bad deal. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's struggled and fought his way back, and he's only recently uh, been able to walk again, actually. So, so uh, anyway, the Undercountry Music News Coup of the Week goes to the 615. And, yeah, I would say. And we got one more, one more place to check in with here before we wrap up the Undercountry Music News. And that is country music is love. And I think I, I'd like to hear your thoughts about this one we're going to gonna get into here. Uh, George Strait has just played his final show of his farewell tour, The Cowboy Rides Away, uh, at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Uh, and it's really just the last show before he takes a really long vacation, you know. I Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's laughable. This whole farewell tour thing, it, it's total BS. And the average person who doesn't understand how the machine works, the, the publicity machine yeah. works, they run out there, they blow a big wad of money on overpriced tickets because they think it's the last chance they'll ever have to see have to see George Strait perform. Yeah. He's already admitted that he's not retiring from performing. He's just not going to go do the massive endless tours, you know, uh, sleeping in hotels for months and months and months at a stretch any longer. That's the only thing he's doing, you know? I would suppose, yeah. And a guy with as big a name as the impact that he's had, he, he should be able to start picking and choosing his retirement soon, I would suppose. Yeah, I mean, it, unless you were going to plan on running around from town to town following him on tour, trust me, you as a fan... You're not going to know the difference. I mean, all it means is that he's not... It, it's just like um, he'll go do a, a few nights over in this town and then go home, and then he'll go do a few nights over in this town and go home, go do a few nights over there, and he's just going to do them in little shorter spurts. I mean, that's that's the only thing. He's going to advance the gear, which means he hires local sound companies in the places he wants to go play to provide the sound and light. And he just flies out there with his band and performs, you know, a, a little handful of shows, flies back home, takes a little rest, and then picks another place he wants to go and does it all over again. That's it. You know, get, give George a few more years and mark my words, it's going to be the George Strait Comeback Tour. The Cowboy Rides Again. The tickets are going to be triple price of the Farewell Tour. <laughs> Oh, no. Maybe they need me to write a song. This is where the cowboy rides in the camp or out into Dodge instead of out of Dodge. Well, just, you know, I'd put a patent on that fake fire of yours, Ben, because I I think you're going to have that one stolen. That idea is going to get stolen. <laughs> yeah, you might be right on that. I mean, I mean, making coffee on stage, that's genius. Well, it definitely adds to the... To the uh, the cowboy campfire for sure. And this has yeah. been your Country Music News 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 News. All right. And that's a wrap on that. That is, and let's say goodbye to all the people in talk show land here because we're going to get back into some more music here, which we cannot play uh, on the talk show format. So we're going to let them go. Uh, but before we do, uh, Ben. Ben Stillwater, why don't you tell the folks out there in talk show land where they can uh, hear your music and find out more about you, and more importantly, also go check out your TV show that you've got. Yeah, we're just uh, starting out with the, the TV show. We've got uh, a promo, and the best place to go is benstillwater.com. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Uh, ben Stillwater on YouTube and there's uh, five or six uh, music videos and a TV show promo on YouTube and uh, of course you can go to CD Baby uh, they've got the albums and stuff on there and, and uh, but the, there's a lot of write up and reading about uh, the latest uh, things we got going on on BenStillwater.com of course you can uh, you can email if you need it at BenStillwater at Yahoo.com that'll get you in touch inside the loop and we've got a you are a brave a man to be broadcasting out your uh, email address like that because right we get some we get some cookies uh, listening to this show sometimes do sometimes so not all the time but so, uh, well on the website there's a there's a uh, 
a newsletter you can sign up to too. And that if you sign up on click on sign up, it'll it's kind of like a fan club or a weekly newsletter that comes out and kind of keeps you in and on what the latest shows and stuff are too. And you've also got uh, an amazing, a really cool collection of Western shirts over there as well that people can uh, can get into. Yeah, of course, that's a big part of what we do, too. Uh, all, all my hats are custom-built out in Montana by a hat maker out there. and Everything we wear is uh, definitely very Western. Well, very cool. So uh, so for those of you uh, in talk show land, we're going to let you guys go so that we can get in some, some music. And if you'd like to hear the whole entire episode of Under Country Music, episode 111, and not just the Under Country Music news, get on over to undercountrymusic.com or just go on to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast, and it'll come to you automatically every week. All right. Bye-bye, talk show land. All right, Ben. Yeah. Now we're going to get into some music here because it's time for the undercountry music one two song punch. Now the un- now the undercountry music one two song punch because you.